Hello and welcome to Auto Inform Online Magazine. My name is David Massey and today's diagnostic workshop feature is talking about DPF regeneration. First of all, I want to introduce this car and uh, give you a little bit, little bit of background to um, what the problem is and what it's doing. Um, a customer brought the car to us with a complaint of uh, poor fuel economy, bad MPG, um, reduced engine performance and intermittently uh, a rough idle speed. Of course, first thing we always do is check for fault codes. This car didn't actually bring back any fault codes whatsoever. Knowing the system pretty well and with experiences what we've had with DPF filters, the first thing I decided to look at was um, DPF engine data. EU emission law, Euro 5, what we're at currently, is getting tighter and tighter. In order to maintain these strict emission laws, the introduction of DPFs um, has been introduced and we are seeing increased amounts of problems. The amount of soot and mass of carbon buildup in the DPF filter is primarily caused by poor internal combustion. Obviously there can be many reasons for this, but the primary reasons which we see in the workshop is down to uh, quality of fuel being bad. Um, we also see a lot of DPS blocks that has had extended life, long service history, um, short and limited drivability. This all contributes to um, a buildup of ash and mass of soot in the DPF filter. Ways we can combat this is by uh, preventive maintenance is my favourite way, using good quality fuels, a high quality of oil and we also have um, a new breed of engine flush treatment we use and oil additives. So the first thing we always do when we uh, diagnose these systems is look at basic sense of plausibility. In order for this DPF to regenerate itself, it needs to know certain data from sensors from the engine. The two main sensors in question in this case are the differential pressure sensor and exhaust gas temperature. We can check these very, very simply by looking at live data. Um, I've actually pre-selected the engine group data for ease, but if you go into group 100, column three and four, you'll actually see um, the differential pressure there for you. Very simple plausibility test on this system is to have a look at differential pressure with the ignition on. So engine not running, ignition on. You should have a value of zero or, or a slightly minus figure. If we have a look at this, straight away there's a problem. We're actually showing 50 millibar with the ignition on. Um, it should, like I said, should be zero. So this system will not be able to regenerate itself efficiently or properly until we repair that sensor. Um, how I intend to go about fixing this problem is two methods. Replace the sensor, number one. Recalibrate the sensor using the correct scan tool. Um, once I've carried that out, due to the previous nature of this car, um, with the long life servicing, the poor drivability, uh, extended oil changes, I'm gonna flush this engine, both in the engine oil, in the manifold, and get rid of any deposits. This chemical process can also help the uh, DPF regeneration procedure. We've had some excellent results from that. So that's how we're gonna tackle this problem. Um, just going back a little bit, talking about two different types of DPF filter. There are, there are what I call close coupled DPF filters, or there's additive filters. Um, the VAG German group decided to use close coupled. What it, it's doing is actually using the um, excessive engine temperatures of 300, 350 degrees, which were achieved at motorway to help regenerate the DPF filter. Other systems which use uh, additive DPF filters, which are halfway down the car, um, obviously will see much lower EGTs or exhaust gas temperatures. The only way it can help regenerate those filters is by the use of an additive. These systems can prove unreliable. Um, two different types of regeneration process. There are passive process or active. The main difference in the two is that passive regeneration will take place under normal driving circumstances. You'll never notice any change in drivability or performance of the engine. On the motorway, you'll see exhaust gas temperatures anywhere between 300 and 350 degrees C. If you drive the car around town, um, i.e. short distance, you will only see temperatures in the exhaust of uh, 150 to 250 degrees. This is not enough for DPF to regenerate and get rid of any of the soot buildup in the exhaust. So this is where active regeneration comes into play. Um, what the ECU does is actually targets the exhaust gas temperature much higher. It does this by four ways. It shuts the EGR valve off introduces um, an extra injection cycle after the main injection process has taken place. Um, 
shuts off the um, air supply to the engine partially through an electronic flap. And the fourth and um, most in significant increase is in boost pressure. This will actually help compensate for lacking power and poor drivability. So as a driver, you may or may not actually notice this taking place. But when this does take place, you will see exhaust gas temperatures in, in excess of 600 to 700 degrees C. This is when the regeneration is taking place and it's helping the, the coating in the DPF um, turn the harmful deposits such as hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide and uh, carbon molecules into carbon dioxide. Okay, before we undertake any force regeneration procedure, um, we're going to quickly recheck the differential pressure with the engine running at idle. Um, we've now replaced the faulty sensor and then we have a correct uh, correlation now at idle showing zero millibar. Um, so we expect to see an engine with DPF at idle of a value no more than 30 millibar. Um, so we'll have a look what we've got here. It's recorded the differential pressure at 60 millibar. Um, that is way too high, it's more than double what it should be at idle. So I'm confident now that the pressure reading is correct and we can now go forward and carry out what I call force regeneration procedure. Um, as well as doing a force regen, we're going to do the uh, flush treatment, the chemical treatment, in helping um, clear up the um, combustion problems which have caused DPF blockage. So what we're going to do now is kill the engine um, and carry out the flush process and force regeneration. Okay, welcome back. Um, what we've done is carried out the three-stage flush treatment. What you'll see appearing on your screen uh, now is before and after pictures, um, before the flush treatment was carried out. As you can see, the difference it's made in uh, removing the carbon deposits. These carbon deposits, obviously, an EGR valve in, in the manifold, uh, and the valves, not to mention the DPF filter. So the cleaning process is quite an aggressive one. Um, it's also worth mentioning as well that if you'd watched the, uh, the previous diagnostic feature using the, the BG flush system, you may have noticed quite uh, a bit of diesel knock. Um, BG have modified the, the size of the jet now, which has completely um, eradicated the diesel knock problem. It, it uses a much smaller jet and, and produces a much finer mist. But yes, the process takes longer, but there's no uh, diesel knock. Um, all right, moving on to the results now, what we've found. If we have a careful look now at the particulate filter um, difference in pressure, before, if you remember, we're about 58 millibar. Now, with the engine running at idle, it's exactly where I want it to be. About 7 millibar, it's more than acceptable. So, the, the flushing worked, the regeneration has worked, and obviously, the, um, the new sensor we fit is now giving the correct reading. So, I'm happy now that this car is, is fixed, it's sorted. Um, I'm going to give it back to the customer with obviously fresh oil, new filter, uh, and a flush treatment in the tank. Um, I may invite them back in a week of time or so just to uh, evaluate the, the pressure and make sure everything's okay with the car and obviously um, close to the monitor the fuel consumption. But you know, having repaired lots of these systems now in this method, I'm fairly confident this won't come back. Um, if you are interested in developing your diagnostic skills any further, then please visit our um, Auto Inform website uh, for more details of our face-to-face -face training. Thank you very much. Come <laughs>